Folks, bang average fishing. How are we all? It's my last day in Japan, guys. What a worldie. What a worldie of a few weeks. What on earth? I just dropped it down and a bag it slammed it. Big sea bus. Big sea bus. Just want to say a big thank you to Peter Storm. Here you go guys, it's a really nice fish. Good for that later tonight. You are! <laughs> Tuna in a pond. What a Probably not the best way to hold a car here, yeah, but. Yes, fish on! And I'm struggling here. Look at the snow. Mountains and some very, very wide pants. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Tokyo in the backdrop. And I am doing the classic carp pose. I've actually been here three days and I was really hoping to do a lot of fishing, but the weather has been abysmal. Not great. So, it's sort of cleared up today. It's still raining. It's a little bit better than it has been. I'm pretty much going to try and make the most of it in this last day. So, the question is, how many fish can we catch in Tokyo in one day? Let's give it a go. First spot we're headed to, a little bit familiar if you've seen the first episode here in Tokyo. Becky Bashi Boat Pier. We're gonna do a couple of hours here, see if we can nab a bass. I'm not overly hopeful, I'll be honest. We are fishing. Now the truth or the weather is not very good. As you can see, it's a bit minging. So it's just gonna be a couple of hours job. Let's see if we can nail a bass, or even a trout for that matter. So there are plenty of trout in here that get stopped. So we'll see, won't we? Not a bad way to spend a couple of hours though. And I have to admit, I did fall in love with this place weirdly. Yeah, I just love the fact that you can sit on a boat and just fish on. I think, is that weed? I think it was weed, I don't know. Fishing underneath the cherry blossom. What more could you want? Well folks, we've given it a good couple of hours here and had absolutely nothing to show for it. C'est la vie. But, it's not the end of our de last day here in Tokyo. This is only half 11. So, we've got plenty more to go and do. I'm gonna head to a tackle shop though, I think. I think that would be a good port of call on the last day, pick up some souvenirs. What I like to do on these fishing trips as well is get like my mum and my sister fishing souvenirs. Because souvenirs are crap anyway, right? Like, who wants a thimble from the Isle of Skye? Do you know what I mean? Did we just have a follow then? I think we did. Finally. Oh, for God's sake, this always happens, doesn't it? Just was about to leave. Arigatou <laughs> I've just had my first glimpse of this massive tackle shop. 
It's looking mega. It's round this corner. Ignore the Lawson. Bingo. It's that bad boy right over there. I think it's the sailfish or marlin on the flipping sign that gives it away. Now I think it's called Joshua Toyocho. But I'll be truthful with you. Don't have a clue. First impressions is the fact that look at this car park. Not many tackle shops have this, do they? I'm not actually sure if I'm going to be allowed to film here, so we'll find out, but... Why on earth did I think it was a good idea to come at the end of my time here in Tokyo when I'm pretty skinny? Bit of a shocker. This is mad though, man. This is proper mad. Loads going on. Ooh, I might buy myself a new cap. This one's getting a bit dirty. That is some seriously nice gear. I'd love a Shimano jacket. Just can't afford it. I'll be truthful. Well, look at these. Insane. Love a bit of sportswear. It's about time. Our fishing clothing's awful. It's just khaki, isn't it? Genuinely, I am I'm absolutely speechless. I'm in the Suzuki section, right? What? An earth, man. I, I genuinely have no idea what to even say or do. Flatfish. Oh my knees. What? What is going on? What is going on? I'm on the trout bit now. More trout stuff. Like, look at it. Like, look at this. This is ridiculous. I think I'm going to be in here hours. I can't even try and explain how mad this shop is. Like, I genuinely can't. Proper tackle boxes. That is a big thing I find in England. It's just not enough. Like, an awful, awful selection. Unless you can't fish him. It's that's getting it's getting on my getting on my tits, that is. I cannot afford this, but the basket is seriously filling up. This is bad. Let future Harry deal with it. Future Harry can solve this problem. Ooh, more stuff. I need to focus. Focus, Harry. I need to get to the checkout. I've got mixed emotions after that whole experience. One, I wish I'd come earlier. I wish I'd come when I first was in Tokyo. Two, I'm a bit like, geez, I've just spent a load of money that I probably can't afford because I've got loads more travelling to do. Three, it was just mental. Like, absolutely mental. The lure fishing selection in there was out of this world. There wasn't anything else, really, other than lure fishing. It was nice to go in a tackle shop with the bait section being this small and the lure section being this big. Doesn't happen very often in the UK. It's only the odd one. I'm just in absolute awe. But I'm also a little bit glad I did come at my end of my time here in Japan. Because if I'd come right at the start, I think I would have ended up spending thousands. The selection was mad. Let's have a run through what I bought, anyway. I actually went and got some ragworm, mainly because I want to try and get a few other different species. What the hell is that? Oh, a little political campaign while I'm doing this. Vote for Pedro, vote for Pedro. Napoleon Dynamite reference for you there. Anyway, so we got some ragworm. We got one of these guys. Don't know how well you can see it. Looks good though, doesn't it? This was recommended to me by a bloke in the tackle shop. I went on Google Translate and I said to him, Oi mate, if you had to choose one lure for Suzuki, what would you get? And he went this one. So we went for this one. Easy as that. Got some of these things. These are a little bit of a, like a smelly jelly bait. I sew me style as well. So they'll do the job for something. This, a Daiwa something or other. This is going to do some naughty stuff back in England. This guy. I did go heavy on the soft baits, I will be honest, but another cool little lure, it'll do the job. And then we're going for this guy, this is the Manic. Probably the most expensive of all the lures that I bought. Don't really know why, it's tiny. Must be good. And then this little lad, not really sure what he's about either, but 
Yeah, he looks all right, doesn't he? I'm sure he'll do the job. Nice. This was also quite spenny now. I'm looking at the price tag behind. And then this lad. A hard bait that I feel like could be absolutely divine. We've had a little shopping spree. It's been absolutely superb. I'm a little bit taken away by it all, to be truthful with you, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. We've done our shopping. Let's get fishing. tide comes in we're gonna hit the money I think I'm confident of that I'm not really at all I'm not confident whatsoever it's on oh my god folks we've caught a fish we have a fish well folks whatever happens we haven't blanked in Tokyo second time round look at this little guy that's got to be a goby of some capacity, isn't it? What a legend. Right, let's get the fella back. Be free, sir. Not the most graceful of releases, but he is free. Boom! I think I'm going to microfish for a little bit, and then I'm going to swap over to the proverbial lures. And it starts to just go a little bit darker, I think. Great work, team. Team Harry, rocking it solo. Yeah, you know that little shot there? I was filming that on the Mr. Bite. Classic. I could catch those little gobies all day, they're great fun. He's just snagged me, the little prick. Oh, here we go. It is our last, last night in Japan. There's a Suzuki with my name on it and I'm gonna pull out all the stops to get one. It's been a bit of a weird last couple of days here in Tokyo, I'll be honest with you. The weather's been abysmal. It started to brighten up a little bit tonight, but a bit late in the day, isn't it? Anyway, come on, let's see if we can get one. However, there is one thing I am gonna try here. Now, drop Jezza a message. He left me on blue ticks, killer. But there is one thing I learned from Jezza Wade, and that is this stuff. A little bit of tobacco is getting dumped in this water. It worked for him, it might work for me. I don't have a clue. But let's get some in the water and hope for some random shaman in Canada does us a solid. And maybe it might just work for musky, I don't know. But I'm gonna do it, here we go. Rock and roll. Has it worked? We'll find out. Insane fishing mark, people. Urban fishing at its best. And I've just put it straight in a tree. <laughs> Great effort. The only positive is, it's a cherry blossom. Well, the tobacco didn't work. Who would have thought it? But sadly, it was time to say my goodbyes to one of the most amazing countries I've ever been to. here in roughly nine hours and safe to say Japan has been a mega mega trip there's been ups there's been downs like with any traveling you can't always have it your own way but there are some things that I've absolutely embraced and absolutely loved I want to just say a big shout out to all the people I've met along the way but a big special one to Itzuru from Bayworks Tokyo honestly that gent is a hero and he needs a medal really helped me with a few fishing spots along the way and for a great day's fishing here in Tokyo and I also just want to say a big thank you to you guys for watching 
amazing. Honestly, some of the comments, some of the love that I've received from this journey has been absolutely out of this world. It's put an absolute big smile on my face and it's got me through some of the down days that you have when you're traveling. So just generally, big, big thank you. I can't, I can't thank you all enough. Yeah, it's been pretty mental and I'm, I'm pretty sad to leave, but also quite mixed on the whole experience as well, in truth. There have been a few things that really haven't sit right, but a couple of highlights has got to be fishing in under Mount Fuji under the sunset, that whopping carp. Up in Hokkaido, I know I didn't do much fishing, but what a wild, wild place that is. Definitely the most wild place here in Japan. It was pretty mental. The snow was out of this world and it did feel like I was in bloody Siberia. And the bass fishing here in Tokyo, that was pretty cool. I can't, honestly, there's been so many positives. But on the flip side of that, there have been a few things that, you know, just haven't sit right with me. Firstly, some of the fish treatment in the restaurants and in the cities, it just ain't right. Sturgeon fishing under an arcade, yeah, that ain't for me. And seeing puffer fish bulked into a fish tank along with tuna as well, yeah. Not for me that, but it's cultural differences. I'm not here to judge, it's just not for me. But this isn't the end of the traveling, funny enough. And I ended up with a little bit of a spontaneous booking whilst in a hostel. Met a good lad called Dan. We got on the bevs, didn't we, in Fuji. That was the day I was hanging out my ass. But I ended up booking a flight to Cairns in Australia. So that's where I'm going after this. I'm off to Australia, baby. I'm off to see the Great Barrier Reef. This is bucket list for me. I wanted to see it before it's gone. So that is exactly what we are gonna do. It could be mental, it could be a disaster. I don't know what to expect, but I am looking forward to sitting on the beach with a lack of summer clothing, having a great time and doing some pretty mega fishing, hope. But right, I better get out of here. I've got to check out my hotel by 11 o'clock and I've got a flight to catch. This journey's going down under. And I promise you, I am gonna try my best to not do an Australian accent. I said try my best, no promises whether or not it's gonna happen or not. Tie lines, folks, keep bloody fishing.